Hey folks, hopefully you saw my recent field tested video of the Nikon Z7. In today's video, I wanna look specifically at the two Z lenses that are now on the market. The 24 to 70 F4 and the 35 1.8. Now I'm sure you've heard the claims from Nikon that the new lens mount is going to allow better lens designs and edge to edge sharpness, among other things. Let's hear it from them. We can put the big diameter lens across the image sensor. So with bigger diameter, we have a room here and we can place the more powerful actuator so for faster autofocusing. focusing 55mm inner mount diameter and 60mm front back distance, these may seem like just numbers, but together they result in endless possibility for optical design. Okay, now a couple of things we have to acknowledge up front. It does seem that just from a design perspective, it is true that a bigger lens mount with a shorter flange distance gives you more flexibility in the kind of designs you can make. That seems to be true. That doesn't necessarily mean that A, you need a big lens mount or a short flange distance to make great lenses because we're seeing that already. And B, it doesn't mean that having that advantage, we as consumers are going to actually see the results of that. After all, Nikon is hitting the market with three lenses that are all slower than the other ones on the market. And then the 0.95 that's coming down the track is meant to be quite expensive and it's going to be manual focus. So that point that they made about that, it's going to allow for faster autofocus, for example. Well, we haven't seen that yet. I have to assume they're talking about comparing their uh, mirrorless design to other mirrorless designs in terms of focus speed because comparing the 35 on the Z7 to a 35 on the D850, the D850 is quicker, even though it's got this traditional DSLR design. Anyway, I didn't want this to be about talk. So last week I got in model Joanna. We were doing some filming to wrap up the field tested video and we did some more testing in studio and on the street. I specifically wanted to compare the Z7 with its 3518 to the D850 with the 3518. Now the 18G is back ordered everywhere and kind of old. So I'm actually using the Tamron 35 that has VC in the lens as well. So the Z mount 35 mil is $850. And whilst it's meant to allow for, you know, easier design, it's actually more complex, more expensive and heavier than the existing 35 mil 18 for F mount. Go figure. The Tamron is cheaper at $600. It's simpler again, but it's actually the heaviest of all three, probably because it has that VC built in. Now, in terms of 24 to 70, there is a big difference in size between these, definitely, especially once they're closed down. Once they're both opened all the way up, though, in terms of length, there isn't so much of a difference. But the new Z mount being an F4 is significantly lighter than the 24 to 74 F mount but it doesn't feel as rugged in my opinion. The Z mount is coming in at just under $1,000, whereas the 2.8 non-VR version is $1,800 and the VR version is $2,400. So interesting that the 24 to 70 is coming in a lot cheaper than the F mount, whereas the 35 is actually, and the 50 especially, are coming in a lot more expensive than the F mount variants. Enough talk, let's actually test them out. Joanna was great fun to shoot with. We'd only just met, just started shooting, had Shravia doing some behind the scenes. We were deep in the middle of editing and we just took about 30 minutes to grab some studio shots. I was using the Westcott Rapid Octa XXL for her main light. I was using my beautiful gravity backdrop. I really love shooting with these. You can pull out some beautiful colors from them. And for some of the shots, I added a gelled blue flash in the background and a couple we just had it firing towards the back to give her a hair light. And could you put your shoulders back a bit? It'll just help tighten up those straps.
Okay, that looks nice, but just turn your chin slightly to your left. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so you don't need to move your head position, just put your arms behind you and your shoulders back. It might feel a bit weird, but I'm just cleaning up the frame a little. I need a bigger apartment, Trevia. Ah, or a smaller, smaller ass would also work. Now in studio, I was just using the 24 to 70s. I wanted that little bit of extra room. Here's some of the different shots. Let's take a quick look in Capture One Pro. You can see, to be honest, they're both in this kind of condition, yielding beautiful and usable images. If you head on over to the link on screen and in the description below, you can download a pack of all of these images. You can also check out Capture One Pro for yourself, links below and at that web page for you to download it and get 10% off your purchase. Now, some of the TTL footage you saw there, we actually recorded with the Atomos Ninja 5, this brand new little guy, to be able to show you what the camera itself was seeing. Now, before we jump outside and talk about the 35 mils, I have to say the focus is still better on the D850. For me, it's absolutely usable with the Z7, both outside and inside, it was usable. But when she was moving and I was trying to have it track her, even just walking back and forward like this on the street, a lot of the shots weren't pin sharp with the Z7, but they were with the D850. Let the hair, the wind's going that way, right? Yes. So let it go with the wind. She's drunk. Taking a look at the different shots here, I have to say the Z7's 35mm is fantastically sharp, it's crisp, it's contrasty. I'm not the kind of guy who shoots brick walls to test the corners, but if you want to zoom in and check that on these files, feel free to do so. But looking at them, you can see we're grading a whole lot of detail up there, beautiful contrast and color out in the midday sun. Having said that, in the backlit situations, I actually was most impressed with the D850 and the Tamron 35mm. Checking out these ones, heavily backlit, still we're retaining so much detail with this lens. For 600 bucks, I really think this is a bargain if you're still in the DSLR world. Okay, now MTF charts are issued by the manufacturer and should be taken with a grain of salt. These two lenses for the Z mount are scoring phenomenally well on that, showing sharpness to the edges that exceed even things like the Sigma Art lenses, which were previously right at the top of the pile. But that's all theory. What we're looking at here is practical in the field. Now, of course, I did shoot with these for several weeks, but this was a fairly brief shoot. Half an hour in studio, half an hour on the street. Overall, I can say Either of these kits is going to give you phenomenal results if you know what you're doing, especially in terms of light, because with that quality of light, a lot of the studio shots I could have taken with a much less sophisticated sensor and lens combo and still gotten some really nice shots. The light brings out so much contrast in the shots. If you haven't, check out my Take Control of the Light download series where I walk you through all the different elements of light, no matter what style of photography you're into. Now, having taken 10,000 frames with this over the past three or four weeks is one thing, but I've probably put millions of frames through Nikon DSLRs in my time, so you could put part of my findings down to that, I acknowledge it. The shots where I had focus absolutely nailed with the Z7, I found they were nearly always perfectly sharp. I think the IBIS really, really helps. I found the focus better on the D850, but still using a non-stabilized combo like the 24 to 70, 
there was a higher chance of getting a small amount of motion blur given the high 45.7 megapixel sensor that these guys are using. Overall, I think you really couldn't go wrong with either one. If you're coming from the D850, then you might find the focus a little flaky on the Z7. If you're coming from just about anything else in the DSLR world, below the D850 level, it's going to be absolutely adequate and more. And for this kind of shooting, they were both just adequate. But I would say using any kind of continuous tracking to have it stay on the model's face as she's walking through scene, it just wasn't perfectly reliable. I'm sure as I shoot with this guy more, thanks to B&H Photo, I have this on a bit of a long-term loan to check out. Um, I will refine the process and get better and better hit rates out of it. Thank you to Joanna for coming along and shooting with us for the day. It was really fun. I hope to get her into the channel again. If you enjoyed seeing how this Atomos works, you can check this guy out. This has only recently been released and it's a fantastic little unit, so small, but you can put the full two and a half inch SSD in there and record. It does the 10 bit log out of this as well as through the lens stuff. Do check out the link in the description below and you can see the whole big set of image files from both of these cameras so you can pixel peep them to death or just look at them broadly to compare and contrast. Let me know what else you'd like to know about the Z7. I'll see you soon.